Good afternoon. Today I'd like to show you how to take a drawing of a photochemically milled stencil and convert it from AutoCAD into Gerber and then from Gerber into a BIMP file which can be used to drive an inkjet printer. So here's the drawing we received and let's zoom in and see how it's been done. If we zoom in farther we see there's this large array of little stencils. Let's zoom in even farther. What you can see is very common in industry they have drawn the areas that are to be etched away from the plate of metal. Everything else that gets left is metal. On our final BIMP file, we'll have to have ink everywhere out here in the field and no ink inside of these regions. They've used zero with closed polylines to define each region, so there's no confusion as to what area that should be uh, dealt with. Let's do a quick measurement to see what our critical dimensions are. We'll use the AutoCAD distance command and we'll measure from here to here. And it's telling us that the delta Y is approximately uh, 0.08. That's in millimeters. We need to make sure that we use a DPI that's high enough so that we can resolve those lines nice and cleanly. Why don't we convert this into Gerber? I'm going to use Artworks ASM500 DXF to Gerber translator. So I'll start by selecting the DXF file, and our file is called Stencil. And I'll make sure that I've told the program the units are in millimeters. Now we'll configure the conversion. So let's check our Gerber output. We want a Gerber output also in millimeters and a format of 3.3. That'll give us one micron accuracy and now we're going to set our translation options. The most important one here is I'm setting my arc resolution very high, but I'm setting my chord error, which is the difference between the approximated arc and the real arc down to two microns, 002 millimeters. I don't need any of these other functionalities and I'm going to produce 274X. Now we'll set our apertures. I've already got an aperture file called Stencil. The two key apertures are these POEX, which stands for Polygon External, and that means that those are the boundary edges of, an, of a polygon to be filled. They don't have any diameter because they're actually a boundary. And now layer processing, all this data is on layer zero, so that's easy. I'm just going to set outline mode and using the POAX apertures I defined. At this point, we can start the translation, and it's done. Let's view our Gerber data. There's our Gerber data, so let's zoom in. Zoom in some more, zoom in some more. Here's that same slot that we saw in AutoCAD, and let's measure the distance in Gerber come to here and we go say there to there we'll see that it's uh, 0.079 and I had measured it at 0.078 and I think the only error there is not in the data but in my accuracy of snapping to the edge we've retained all of our information now we're going to convert this into a bitmap here's the directory where I've been working in and you can see I have my zero.gerber file I've created a little batch file called rip2500.bat. This is going to exercise my rasterizer. I'm using the Gerber to Grayscale rasterizer. We don't need grayscale output, but this rasterizer has a shrinking function that I do want to take advantage of. And I've created a simple command line. This is my input file here, my 0.gerber. My output name is going to be stencil. I'm going to put the output into the current directory. I have a working directory with temporary data goes there. Notice that I've checked the inverse, and I have to do that so that I get the pixels in the area that's not digitized. I've defined my command line units to be millimeters. This aw command is very helpful. When you do an inverse rasterization, you have to specify some kind of boundary for the data to end because we don't want it to go out to infinity. What AW stands for is auto window. It computes the actual extents of our digitized data and then it's going to add a 25 millimeter boundary on each edge of the digitized data. Think of that as my margin. I'm setting the DPI to 2500 because the feature size is fairly small and I want to make sure I have enough pixels to reasonably reproduce both the curves and get the width of that opening to the right size. I've allocated 256 megabytes of RAM, which is actually quite a lot for this job. I'm producing the BMP format output. Once I have a command line like that, I just have to execute it. I'll just double click on this and our program will open up with a little dialog and you can see that it only took a few seconds and it created a very large BIMP file. So let's actually take a look at it and see what we have. There aren't very many viewers that'll handle really large BIMP files. Even Adobe Photoshop has significant problems. So we wrote our own called Very Large Bitmap Viewer, which you're looking at. You can see that here's the extents of our data and this is our 25 millimeter margin all the way around. Let's zoom in and let's zoom in again and again. Now we're actually down to where we can see the individual pixels. This is our opening width. 
you see how fast it was for us to generate the bitmap that's going to be used to drive the printer. And you can see also that it took care of the details of producing ink on the area outside the digitized area, and it also dealt with whatever margins we wanted so that we could handle this. Thank you.